Hello there, people of the internet. So before you start giving me flack about how you feel one way or the other about this topic, let me go ahead and just give my information about this before you go typing in the comments saying, you know, that's bull, I have fired tons of this stuff, or that's bull, I fired two rounds and it destroyed everything I have, and just let, let, let me talk before you guys decide to go down and type in the comments down below. So, Turkish 8mm Mauser ammunition. Turkish 30-06 is also on the market. That's a topic for another time. We're talking specifically about the 8mm Mauser ammo that is on the market right now. Turkish 8mm surplus. This is a 155 grain projectile, nickel plated. It's going to travel at around 3,000 feet per second, depending on what year it is that you have and what batch it is that you get. Some of, it, some of the powder has been degraded. And uh, as a result, uh, some of this stuff does burn a little hotter than 8mm Mauser is supposed to. Before you go tell me, no, that's wrong, it's, it's exactly as the way it was designed, let me go ahead and explain what it is I'm trying to explain here. So a little bit of history behind this stuff. This stuff was actually designed to mimic the German S cartridge, which was also a 155 grain full metal jacket that also traveled at around, uh, the German one traveled around 2,900 feet per second. Well, this stuff right here, depending on the year it is and the batch that you get it, has uh, gone as fast as 3,200 feet per second from a chronograph test. As a matter of fact, nah, I don't think I can link it. I was going to link some stuff down below to kind of prove that fact, but YouTube's kind of iffy whenever it comes to the links that you can provide. But uh, from what I have seen from the chronograph tests that I have witnessed myself, depending on the year that you get this stuff uh, and the batch that you get it from, it can vary from traveling at around 28, 2,900 feet per second just like the original 8mm uh, Mauser design stuff, the original German S cartridge did, or it can have degraded the powder composition uh, inside of the uh, case itself, could have degraded just over time from improper storage conditions, and you would get a hotter, more powerful, more pressure round which would travel slightly faster. I find with what I have seen uh, from 1941 to 1943, those rounds seem to be the ones that travel a little bit faster and have a little bit higher pressure. Uh, if you get ones from the 1930s, late 1940s, and 1950s, those seem to not travel as fast as the early World War II production era. Now, does that mean that this stuff is safe? Well, first off, I'm gonna say uh, it, it depends on the platform it is that you're running it in. Uh, this Turkish stuff does in fact fire at a higher pressure than uh, other 8mm Mauser stuff no matter what year it is that you're getting. As a matter of fact, this right here is 1943 production Turkish Mauser ammunition that I literally just fired making another video and some Yugo surplus 8mm Mauser ammunition. And the primer strikes on the back of this thing, you can see on the Yugo surplus we have very nice primer strikes. They're deep and we don't have any bulging or rippling of any kind. This right here indicates uh, adequate pressures inside of the cartridge. However, for our Turkish rounds, we have basically little dots with ripples around them, which absolutely indicates overpressure ammunition. Now, I'm firing this stuff out of a uh, German Car 98 World War II production, which is a Mauser 98 action, nice and strong. The Mauser 98 action is absolutely strong enough to handle the pressures that this uh, Turkish ammunition produces. But as you can see right there, same rifle, same exact rifle, don't go saying, well, the rifle's been messed up. Uh, same rifle, different primer bulging. We definitely have overpressure with our Turkish ammunition. Now, if this was a 30s production or 50s production, it might not be as severe as what we're seeing here. But this uh, early to mid World War II stuff does tend to burn a little bit hotter than uh, the other stuff that I talked about. Now I do not have an actual chronograph with me so I cannot tell you exactly how fast this stuff is going but with what I've seen from this gear of production expect around 3,000 to 3,100 feet per second. Now that being said, tons of people have asked me, hell every time I make a video about these things. Is this safe to run through my XYZ rifle? If you have a 98, like a Mauser model 98 action, then yes, it is going to be safe. However, if you're rocking something like that, that might not have as strong of an action, like one of those Carcano rifles, Carcano, however it is you want to pronounce that. One of those rifles that has been uh, re-chambered uh, re for 8mm Mauser, something like that, uh, the action might not be strong enough to handle this Turkish stuff. Or maybe like a Mauser 93 action, 
Uh, I know there are some Turkish Mausers out there and people will tell me, I run that through my Turk 93 action no problem. I'm like, alright, do you have a 93 or a 98? Because I have a 93 and it, this stuff pressure sticks my 93. And what year production of the Turkish ammunition are you running? So through a 98 action, I mean, as long as your action is tight inside of the rifle, uh, you shouldn't have any issues with your stock cracking. I do have issues with this crack or with this stock cracking but uh, the stock was already cracked on this thing and I have not had any uh, issues with any additional, additional cracks showing up on this thing or the fixed cracks opening up. But as long as your uh, firearm, your action and whatnot is tightly inside of your wood, you shouldn't have issues with uh, your stock cracking either. Now, depending on the condition of the wood, depending on how dry it is, depending on your environment, like here in the state of Florida where it's freaking humid outside every single day wood doesn't really tend to dry out as a matter of fact it will tend to like get wet and moist and you gotta you gotta pay attention to that and make sure that you don't have any issues with swelling or anything like that now uh forgotten weapons ian mccollum he famously shot some of this stuff through his mauser and it did crack his stock so fair caveat it can happen depends on your stock depends on how well it's been maintained how dry the wood is depend like there's a lot of factors that goes into that uh this turkish eight millimeter mauser stuff i compared it to some yugo stuff in a previous video as a matter of fact i just finished uh, that video that is where i got the uh, uh, comparison yugo uh, mauser brass from but it does recoil harder so I know for a fact that it is in fact uh, shooting harder. Now normally with a uh, light, lighter weight projectile you're going to end up having less recoil, but since this is traveling substantially faster than our Yugo stuff, uh, this stuff right here does recoil harder. So if you want a lighter recoiling 8mm Mauser around, Turkish ammunition might not be right for you. But if you have yourself a beater rifle, or maybe one that already has a crack stock, or maybe like a sporterized 8mm Mauser rifle with a 98 action or something like that, then you can absolutely send this stuff through that rifle. And as you can see, I just fired that Turkish 8mm Mauser stuff through this rifle, and it did not detonate in my face. Now, whenever I cycle this thing, take note on how it did not pressure stick inside of the chamber either. If you have issues with pressure sticking 8mm Mauser uh, ammunition inside of your chamber, you probably have a 93 action or a small ring uh, Mauser rifle or something like that. But as long as it's through the 98 action, which is what a lot of your modern rifles are based off of just because of the strength of the action, then you should be able to run it through that system no problem at all. Now, do not put this stuff through a semi-automatic system or any kind of roller delayed system. Don't run it through your MG42 or something like that. It's just, do, do not do it. I've seen a ton of people in the comments whenever I make these videos talking about, that's machine gun ammo. It's designed to be ran through the MG34 or something like that. No, 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 it's, it's not. This, this high pressure stuff, maybe back whenever it originally came out, uh, at the pressures it was running, it would have been fine. But it is absolutely not fine. I have seen and heard of several stories of people running these through automatic platforms where the automatic platforms have basically just freaking detonated and you do you just do not run this. Do not run Turkish stuff through any kind of automatic platform. Don't run it through a G43 or G41 or a Hakim or an MG. Just don't do it guys. But you run it through a bolt action rifle Ow. you run it through a bolt action rifle and although the recoil is a little harsh it does uh, survive inside of that rifle and whenever we take a look at the brass yep we have very clear signs of overpressure inside of this stuff so it's definitely uh, an overpressure round so is it safe yes it's safe as long as you're using the appropriate platform if you want to get some rifle ammunition for your bolt action rifle and uh, you have a 98 action, then by all means, go right ahead. You can absolutely run this stuff through a 98 action. Well, thanks for watching, folks. I just gave you a very clear example. I've ran a lot of stuff through these 98 actions. And whenever I make videos talking about the do's and don'ts for this ammunition, I get comments from people saying, like, that's nonsense. I ran that through my car 98 just fine. It's not dangerous. And I'm like, yeah, I, I literally, I literally, did you not watch the video? I... I literally said, bolt actions, 98, good to go, and I, I, I guarantee you, just go look in the comments, you're probably going to see somebody who says something along the lines of, that's nonsense, I ran it through this just fine, or you're going to get people that say, that's nonsense, I ran 5,000 rounds of that through my Hakeem with no problems, and I know for a fact that's going to be 
that's going to be nonsense. The Hakeem is over gas to start with, even with its gas system in it. It's adjustable gas system. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Sounds like somebody's out there playing on the road. Uh, description down below, link to all sorts of stuff. Go check that out. You guys go off. Have yourself a fantastic day. Let me grab some more ammo and make myself another video because I'm having a good time. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.